I think that we can all agree that most of us, myself included, have had many problems with Windows 11 24H2. From random stutters to broken features, it just hasn't really been the most stable or enjoyable operating system. But now that version 25H2 is soon to release, I think that we should explore its new features and decide if Microsoft is finally taking a step in the right direction, or if they're making it worse. Now, I will not be able to judge the stability aspect of this beta, because the stable version of 25H2 is not officially released yet, and I'm also not using bare metal. But I will enable and try out the new features that come part of this overhaul. So, let's get right into it. First of all, let me explain how to download the ISO. While I don't recommend most of you to use this software, for those who accept the risks and want to try out the beta before it is released, you can simply head over to UUP Dump, which I'll have linked in the description. This allows you to download the latest version of Windows, including beta, dev, and canary releases. Simply click on the version you would like to download, and select the link that says Insider Preview. Do not click on the update stack package, it won't work. Now, click Next and choose the different editions of Windows you want to add to your ISO. Then click Next and click Create Download Package. This will download a zip file to your computer, which you have to extract. Once you've extracted the zip file, right click on the Windows download script and run it as administrator. The script will run for some time, do not close or interrupt it. After it tells you that the creation was finished, close the command prompt window and navigate to the folder in which the script was located. You should see an ISO file ready to use for installation. Now that I've explained how to run 25H2 for yourself, let's explore the new features and I'll also give my opinion as to whether or not the changes are good or bad. The first thing that you'll notice is that the background of the Windows installer is now black. I thought it was an interesting change because Windows 11 has always been switching from purple and black when it comes to the colors of the installer. Fundamentally, though, the installer remains practically the same. Even the out-of-box experience is the same. The second thing that you'll notice, after setting up Windows, is that the start menu has been completely overhauled. Gone are the two separate screens and in comes this bigger menu with your pins and recommended items like normal but now we have an all new look to show all of the apps right below the recommended section. Personally, I love it. It is really organized and you can switch between views for all of your apps. Additionally, if you dig into the start menu settings, you can finally completely get rid of the recommended section if you do not like it there. I am so grateful that they've added this option because I personally find no use in that section and it is a waste of space for me. Overall, I think the new start menu is a great change, and I hope that it continues in this direction moving forward. The next thing that you'll notice, which I showed in the start menu section, is the new settings app. While not really much different compared to 24H2, it has a new layout, which I also like. I always liked the settings app's design, my main gripe with it was really just how laggy and slow it was to navigate the menus. So, with the final release, I hope that settings comes with a speed improvement. And you can see the theme of stability all throughout this build, because it seems like Microsoft has been working hard this year to ensure that all of our stability problems with 24H2 get fixed, as opposed to adding new features or cramming even more AI into the OS. And I really do appreciate these attempts to make Windows more stable, because my experience with 24H2 was not very great, and this new build is looking very promising. Windows 11 25H2 will also now throttle your CPU when your PC is inactive to save energy. I assume this is meant for portable devices like laptops or even power-hungry desktops which are set to never sleep. For high-end systems, it is a good change which could significantly decrease power consumption on idle. Other little things I noticed was a new resume menu and settings under apps, which I didn't find in any other builds before. And I'm not sure if this is just me or not but it feels like there is less third-party bloatware on the start menu with this build. That is really nice to see, although there are still a couple of third-party apps, and the pre-installed bloatware is still present. Apparently, there is also a new AI-powered assistant inside the Settings app which is supposed to help you find and adjust settings, which is similar to Samsung's Galaxy AI on their phones. Overall, 
My review on the Windows 11 25H2 beta is that it's a really good, refined build of 24H2 with some new features to improve the experience, and some significant stability improvements which we should hopefully see the effect of in the stable release. If you would like to try this beta out for yourself, I would highly recommend either using a virtual machine like I have, or using a secondary computer which you have lying around, because as with any beta, there is a small risk of bugs and random crashes which could happen. But other than that, thank you for watching, and take care.